Hello everyone, this is Mark. Today we're going to be showing you how to update the RAM in this Lenovo IdeaPad 110 laptop computer. You can see the model number here. And what I've done is I've replaced the hard drive in here with a solid state one already. And at that point I probably should have just done this RAM project then. But uh, Wanted to see how the computer would perform without doing it. This comes with eight gigabytes of RAM already in it. Four is soldered to the motherboard. And then there's uh, another four in there that's in a slot, as you'll see later, that you can change out. So basically what I did is I bought this crucial eight gigabyte uh, RAM stick. And I'm going to be putting this in there to upgrade it to a total of 12 gigabytes of RAM. And we'll show you how to do that. But if you're new to doing this kind of stuff and you're not sure what kind of RAM to put in, then you can go to the Crucial website, and there's another website called Data Memory Systems that I've used in the past as well. And you can just plug in your computer model, and uh, it'll tell you the different options you have for uh, RAM upgrades or replacements. And uh, you can just follow that, and that's exactly what I did when I purchased this for just under $20. And uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that. So with all that being said, uh, let's get started. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove 11 screws that are on the bottom of this laptop. I've got it turned over and the laptop is obviously turned off. But uh, again, there are 11 of these holes right here and they all have these small Phillips head screws in them. So I'm going to remove those to uh, aid in getting the bottom of this uh, laptop open. So I'm not going to bore you with doing all 11 of these on screen. So I'll get back to you when I get back to the, uh, the last one. Okay, so I've got 10 of the 11 screws removed. I saved this one right here for last because this screw actually holds this DVD drive bay into place. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this one, the last one. Set it aside with all the others and all these screws are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. Then I'm going to go ahead and pop this DVD drive out, set it aside, and then you'll notice there are two screws here. Now I already removed one of them, but um, again, I just wanted to show you that there are two here and they are different from the other, the other 11 screws that I already moved, but uh, I already popped one out. So again, I'm just going to remove this one too and just show you. the difference in the two. So again, just be aware, but uh, again, I'm gonna go ahead and put these aside where I won't lose them and then go to the next step. Okay, so I've moved, removed 13 total screws and you would think that would be enough, but uh, for some reason, the folks at Lenovo put another screw that I need to open this case up underneath the keyboard. So what I'm going to have to do now is uh, remove this keyboard. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of guitar picks. And if you watch some of my other videos, you know I do play guitar. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, just wedge this underneath here where these F2 and F3 keys are and get it to pop up. And then I'm going to take another guitar pick and just run it underneath here along with my finger. And you'll hear these clips snap open. And then I've got one more on this side. And there we go. Once you have this top loose, you just pull it up. Oops. Didn't want to do that. We just pop this keyboard up and you can see that this is now loose. Now there is, I'll show you here, underneath the keyboard, if you wanted to remove this completely, here is where you would do that. The keyboard 
clips in right here. I'll give a screwdriver to kind of point a little bit better towards it. And you can just pop that out and remove the keyboard if you want to do that completely. I am not going to do that right now. I am just going to go ahead and place this keyboard like so for the moment. And here is the hidden screw. It's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Place it with the others and again this screw that goes in right here is uh, again the same size as all these other 11 screws that uh, we took out of the bottom of the keyboard or the bottom of the computer. So now that I've got that done what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this back here and pop the bottom in a little bit. Remove this guitar pick. And I'm just going to take a couple of pieces of scotch tape and tape this keyboard down so it doesn't go anywhere and that strip doesn't come loose. And we'll hold it just like that for now. Okay, so next step is I'm going to separate this top part of the laptop from the bottom part. And I'm going to start right here where this DVD, DVD drive was. And I'm just going to go ahead and use, again, my trusty guitar pick and my finger. And just kind of create some separation there and then work this in like so. And then just start working this guitar pick around the edges with my finger holding it up. And you'll hear the popping as it pops out. Just be gentle and careful while you're doing this.
Good. It took a minute, but we finally got this separated, and now we can see underneath. So what I'm going to do at this point is again just close this lid very carefully and flip this back over. And here we have the current RAM. So you can see, oops, you can see that I replaced the hard drive already. This is where that goes if you're up there doing that. And then this is where the, uh, the RAM stick is, the changeable one, or the removable one is. So in just a second, we'll change that out and get moving. Okay, so the bottom of this again is loose. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and completely remove this bottom, you would have to unplug this battery cable that plugs in right here. Uh, and then you can just take the whole bottom off. But I am not going to do that since I'm only going to be under here for a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to do is I got a couple of uh, nice clean dish towels. And I'm just going to set them right here and prop this bottom up for a second and then I'm going to try and get a little bit better shot for you on this RAM module but you can't see it real well here but there are two tiny silver prongs on either side of this and basically what I'm going to do is just touch those and this RAM stick pops out and then just pull it out and again make note of where the notch is so old ram stick here and here's new ram stick so again the notch you got to line it up with the notch right here and then just kind of wedge it Make sure it's in there pretty well. And then we're just going to push it down and clip it into place. And again, just take your finger and not real hard, but make sure the thing is in there tight. So it's got a good connection. And that should do the trick. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove these towels. And take this bottom again and carefully. Put it back into place and then just start snapping this down. And just kind of work your way around the edges and press. And I think everything is popped in tight now. And then we'll go ahead and flip this back over. We're going to again gently just raise the top. And again, go around the edges one more time and just make sure everything is popped into place. It seems good. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this scotch tape. these screws flip this keyboard over gently pop that back into that hole and tighten that screw up and then we're going to place the keyboard back we're going to flip it back over and again we're going to start by, you can see, hopefully you can see some notches right here on the bottom of the keyboard. So we're just going to 
work those back in underneath like so. Make sure they're all underneath the frame of the keyboard. Put that in. <laughs> Don't turn on the on button like I did a minute ago. <laughs> Be careful not to do that. And we'll just start popping this keyboard back into place. And you'll hear it snap all the way around. Last corners by the power button. And that all looks good. Nice and flush. Oop, one more here. Spoke too soon. Okay, that all looks good. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and close the lid. And flip this over. And then we've got these two screws right here, again, that are different with the big flat heads on them. And we're just going to go ahead and replace those real quick and then do the others. And again, I'll get back to you when I'm almost done with that. Okay, so I've got all the 12 screws back in. And again, I'm going to save the last one for this DVD drive bay. And again, this DVD drive just slides back in here. And the last screw, the last 13th screw, goes in this hole right here. And we will tighten that. And everything should be back in place at this point. So everything feels solid. Check the keyboard one more time. Everything feels nice and flush, so I think we should be good to go. Okay, so everything is done and installed and put back together, and I've gone ahead and uh, just booted back the computer back up and restarted actually three times, and actually it does boot up much faster and played around with it for a few minutes and the programs open more, more quickly. So adding that uh, extra four gigabytes of RAM does seem to have helped the performance of the computer. And in conjunction with adding the new uh, solid state hard drive, this is much, much faster than it used to be when it had the old uh, spinning hard drive in it, the original spinning hard drive in it. So anyway, hopefully um, this video will help some folks out there. Uh, again, if you liked it, certainly send a few likes my way. But um, other than that, I will uh, see you on the next project and thank you so much for watching.